Welcome to Diamonds and Rust. I'm your host, The Stray Cat. There was a phase that films went through during the 80s that used robots, cyborgs, androids, etc. Typically, they were used in the action sci-fi genre, but one movie in particular decided to use them in horror films. That film being... Shopping Mall. Made under the working title Killbots, the film tells the story of four young couples being trapped overnight in a shopping mall with three robot security guards that have gone rogue. It features a cast who are an alumni in the horror of sci-fi genre, though it doesn't really have any big names attached to it. Said to be somewhat derivative in premise to the 1973 film Trapped, the two films have little in common with each other outside of the basic storyline. We open with a burglar stealing jewelry and then being confronted by one of the Killbots. After he runs, he's tased. This turns out to be a promotional video from Securetronics, a robotics company that builds the Killbots, or the Protector 101 series robots. 101 probably being a hat tip to the Terminator model. The presentation is being given to the store owners in the mall, introducing them to their new security guards. In attendance, we see Paul and Mary Bland, who have presumably moved their restaurant to the mall. Maybe we could use one at the restaurant. Get rid of people we don't like. I think these two can do that just fine without robot guards. Trust me, absolutely nothing can go wrong. Which of course means that all hell is about to break loose. The credits roll over scenes of people doing various things in the mall, including some asshole who pushes a kid aside and takes over his video game. We even get a flash cameo by Rodney Eastman, who you may remember from the Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4 films. This place seems kind of familiar to me. Perhaps the Killbots were hired to get rid of the killer disguised as an Indian. We're introduced to our leading ladies, who are two waitresses at a mall restaurant. Though it's not Paul and Mary's country kitchen, but this guy's, who seems to be pretty bad at applying condiments. Susie tries to persuade Allison into going to a party that night by setting her up on a blind date. You've just got to show. Susie, you've got a one-track mind. I already told you. I don't know anybody. Yeah. You know, I don't blame Allison for having reservations about going out with one of Susie's friends. I've seen the kind of guy she usually dates. I admired your beauty, my dear. We cut to a lightning storm that strikes the computer that's on the mall's roof completely uncovered. Brilliant idea. This causes the killbots to go haywire and kill one of the technicians. Eh, don't worry about him. He'll be resurrected in a few years as Bud the Chud. Ah. We meet our male stars who are hosting a party after hours inside the furniture store. Ferdy is the straight-laced conservative, Greg is the suave voice of reason, and Mike is such a dipshit that even the script acknowledges it. Shake. You know, Brennan, you're becoming a real candidate for prickhood. <laughs> Mike and Greg convince Ferdy to come to the party by fixing him up on a blind date. Susie has a surprise for you. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Come on, Ferdy. Next, we see a couple with car trouble who establish through some pointless exposition that they're newlyweds. We haven't had any fun since we sunk all our wedding money into this. Well, she's quite a step up from his last girlfriend. So there I was, sitting in this fast food joint, thinking to myself, Scott, old boy, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Mike goes to see his girlfriend, who is just as unlikable as he is. The, uh... Daddy. He was just telling me how he couldn't wait to take me over to Susie's house tonight for her, um, birthday party. You lock up? Sure, I'll take care of everything. Yes. I'm sure you will. And could he be any more obnoxious about chomping that fucking gum? Allison agrees to go to the party and meet her date. Oh, great! This is gonna be wonderful! You won't regret this. I bet. Though I'm not sure at this point if we're in the employee lounge or the girls' locker room. At the party, Ferdy is preparing for his blind date with Allison. I don't get why he's so worried. I mean, he was a Cobra Kai. What girl wouldn't be swept away by that? He finally meets her and the two seem to hit it off. You know, the two of them do actually look pretty good together. But if it's alright with you, you can stay a little while longer. I wonder if those kind of skills will come in handy later. 
Marty Futterman is now working as a night janitor to help pay for his new bulldozer and living room. But after taking his frustrations out on the killbots, he's electrocuted to death. After sex, Leslie sends Mike, who is still chomping away at that gum, to get her a pack of cigarettes. A killbot finds him and doesn't appreciate being confused with Gort. Platu, Barada, Nick too, okay? And after he throws his arms up in a what the fuck gesture, he proceeds to kill Mike. Leslie finds Mike dead and her screams alert the killbot. She shot several times with little effect, but after a shot to the head, now traveling as a pair, two of the killbots chase the remaining six through the store. After the mall goes on lockdown, the group decides to escape through the air duct. The women go first and make it in, but the killbots break in before the men get the chance, leaving the group separated. The three guys break into a sporting goods store that must double as an armory and arm themselves. What about shells? 12 gauge. They prove to be better shots than the killbot and finally blow it up. Though killbot one turns out to still be alive, unbeknownst to them. Before making it all the way out, the women feel the men may need help, so they arm themselves with gasoline and flares. After some more chasing, one of the killbots is tricked into entering the elevator and Allison proves to be a badass when she shoots the propane tank, causing the elevator to crash. I can see that she's toughened up since the last time she was held captive in a mall. I'm gonna ice Bachelorette number two. God. They lay low in the restaurant for a while before deciding to destroy the master computer. The master computer is somewhere on the third level. Let's go trash the fucker. Greg is killed when a robot throws him off the third floor. The remaining four barricade themselves in a clothing store, but the killbot cuts through the door. They use some mannequins as a decoy, prompting another gesture that says, where the fuck did all these people come from? During the firefight, Linda is killed, and an enraged Rick rams the killbot with a cart. Yes, the same machines that can withstand a barrage of bullets and cut through steel doors was killed by a cart. Now down to one killbot, the two split up, which we know is always a good idea in horror films. Ferdy has a run-in with the killbot and fires eight shots out of his six-shooter, but is eventually knocked out by the bot. It chases Allison into a pet store, knocking over some aquariums in the process. I think it's worth noting that actress Kelly Maroney did not use a stunt double for this scene. In fact, they originally were going to use scorpions, but since the director wouldn't let them crawl on them, they decided not to use them. After some more chasing, Allison draws the killbot into a paint store, where she manages to finally blow it to shit. Have a nice day! Ferdy turns out to be okay, and he and Allison reconvene just before the credits roll. So that was Chopping Mall. And to tell you the truth, it wasn't that bad. It moved at a good pace, the effects were decent given the small budget, and it didn't have any major plot holes. Aside from the heroine, the characters were pretty generic, but with a film titled Chopping Mall, you're not coming for the character development. I give it a dime. The film did just what it set out to do, and that's entertained. Well, until the next time, I'm the Stray Cat, and this was Diamonds and Rust.